Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 31st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Due to Memorial Day here in the United States, we didn't have a podcast on Monday, but I'm recording this a little bit earlier as we do have some breaking news that I think is worth putting out there a bit earlier than I would usually record the podcast. So this breaking news is the MSMSDT vulnerability, often described as a zero day, but essentially what it comes down to is a novel way to execute code on a user system as a Microsoft Office document is opened without triggering any prompts or additional user confirmation. This was actually first spotted back in April and privately reported to Microsoft. Microsoft didn't consider this a vulnerability. In part, it looks like whoever processed the report at Microsoft didn't completely understand the implication of this vulnerability. Now, on Friday, it was sort of discovered again after a sample that exploited the vulnerability was uploaded to VirusTotal and a Japanese researcher spotted this technique being used. This Japanese uh, researcher, now underscore sec, is the Twitter uh, handle uh, they are going by, did recognize that this is actually a pretty ingenious way to bypass many of the protections that Microsoft has put in place in order to prevent things like macros and such from executing without user permissions. So how does this work? Well, it starts out with an Office document. Now, it couldn't be any Office document. So Excel, Word. Word seems to be the most commonly discussed at this point, but it's not limited to Word. may even work in Outlook, for example, uh, without the user actually opening any attachments or clicking on any links, but just by looking at an Outlook message. Now, Microsoft Office has a feature where you can specify externally hosted HTML templates. So that's the first feature that's being abused here. The document is being opened or viewed and the HTML template document is downloaded. This HTML template uh, may now include JavaScript that will redirect you to a different URL. In this case, one that uses the MS msdt protocol handler. So you have a scheme, something like ms-msdt colon slash, and then a URL that points uh, to the Microsoft debug tool. That's what this protocol handler is meant to do. So the worst thing that should happen at this point is that this Microsoft uh, debug tool opens up and asks you, as it often does, uh, for a code that you were provided, for example, by a support specialist when you call like a support hotline and then the tool would go out and collect information for them to review. But uh, as it turns out, as part of the URL, we are also able to specify PowerShell code because, well, everything is better with PowerShell and uh, that then leads to arbitrary code execution once you get the PowerShell code to execute. So this does not involve any like uh, Visual Basic uh, for application code or uh, any Excel for macros or any of the other tools that have been used in the past. As a result, any of the mitigation techniques that were implemented uh, for macros do not apply here. There is no user interaction before the code is being executed. And this, of course, makes it a big deal given that it already has been exploited for over a month now. So are all versions of uh, Office vulnerable? Well, it turns out there are some versions and pretty much the very latest versions that have been completely patched that appear to be not vulnerable. So there may have been some hidden patching happening on Microsoft's side without actually acknowledging the vulnerability. On the other hand, the most commonly used versions of Office are vulnerable and uh, may be exploited. So you should definitely assume that the version of Windows that you are using is exploitable. Multiple tools are out there now to build exploits and multiple 
pre-built exploits are available as well. So how do you defend against this? Uh, given that there is no patch, uh, the most obvious way to defend against uh, exploitation is to uh, remove that MSMSDT protocol scheme. So what this means is that URL starting with ms-msdt will no longer launch the debug tool and this will break the exploit. It may break some legitimate uses of the debug tool, but uh, so far nobody has really come up uh, with anything that uh, may matter compared to being exploitable. Disabling uh, previews in Microsoft Explorer also reduces your attack surface somewhat. That way a document has to be actually opened and the hacker can't hope that just a simple preview will exploit this vulnerability. Now, if you're using Microsoft Defender, you do have the ability to set up attack surface reduction rules, and uh, these rules uh, may prevent Office from launching the debug tool, so that'll also uh, prevent exploitation, similar uh, as uh, removing uh, the uh, scheme. And of course, a similar endpoint protection tools may allow to do things like, for example, alert on opening of the debug tool from a Microsoft Office or further restrict the conditions under which the tool may be opened. Other than that, of course, you can always hope that anti-malware or whatever sort of endpoint defense tools uh, you have set up will detect exploits. Of course, this is at this point still sort of an ongoing race where uh, exploits are being developed and uh, defensive tools are trying to create signatures or ways to detect uh, these specific exploits. For any late breaking updates, please refer to the diary that Xavier started on this topic. We also do have a webcast planned for Tuesday evening Eastern uh, time with Jake Williams. And I did put together a PowerPoint that you can use to brief management. At least uh, you can use those slides to build a PowerPoint for such a briefing. And of course, if you have any observations, feedback to share, uh, please uh, let us know. Well, uh, that's it for today. Only one topic, uh, but uh, still quite the big topic here. Like I said, a lot of this is still under development, still waiting for Microsoft to chime in here. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.